Hi, welcome to this video in which we are going to tell you all about the story of technology. It's a tale that needs to be heard by every person regardless of what field of technology they belong to. So if you want to know what triggers technological progress and what are the impacts of it, we've got it all covered in this video. In today's world, everyone is affected by technology regardless of their interest in it. This video will help to understand the relationship between society and technology. Coming up, we'll be looking at number one, how technology originates, number two, how it consolidates, number three, its metamorphosis, number four, its unintended consequences, and finally, we will look at its ultimate stage, which is singularity. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire budding engineers and technologists for a better, more sustainable world. Subscribe today to get the updates of our latest videos. So let's begin with the first segment, how technology originates. How technology emanates is a very interesting concept to explore. It's very analogous to creating a fire. Just like for making fire, you need three elements, namely a spark to ignite, fuel, and number three, oxygen in abundance. Likewise, for creating technology, you need three elements, namely talent, resource, and culture. Talent is akin to spark and resource is the fuel. Talent is the intellectual potential, a mind that can think laterally and is full of ideas. Resource refers to the tools, materials and facilities to realize those ideas. Last but not the least is culture. Just like in order to sustain the fire you need oxygen, in similar fashion, having pro-technology culture is important for not allowing those ideas and innovation to fizzle out and keep the fire burning. It is culture that not only nurtures existing talent, but also creates further talent. The importance of pro-technology culture becomes apparent when we see the presence of technology centers that are clustered in specific areas across the world. Silicon Valley, for example, is home to information technology. Detroit is the hub of automotive technology. Fraunhofer Institute in Germany is home to solar energy technology and various other applied research and development fields. Likewise, Far East Asia is the center for consumer electronics technology. It's the presence of culture that attracts talented individuals towards a particular technology. It hones their skill set and makes certain that ideas get from drawing boards to shop floor. A good example of this is the katana sword. Sword making technology in Japan has been around for centuries. The intricate manufacturing process of katana sword involves several stages of high skill labor. The only way to see it through several generations of sword makers was apprenticeship which required years of practice and following of tradition. It was the creation of culture that valued the product and craftsmanship that sustained its development. Having looked at the elements of technology origination, we now look at how technology consolidates and how it sustains. Have you ever wondered why certain technologies take root while others perish? How VHS, that was relatively inferior technology compared to Betamax, was still able to outdo its counterpart. The reason is, when it comes to sustainability of technology, it is not the best technology that always wins, but it is the technology that has a greater customer focus. What customer focus entails is lower cost of product, ease of use, and conformance to regulatory requirements. To meet customer-centric goals, technologies often require backing of investors. And for the investors, it is important to gauge upfront the true potential of a technology. For this purpose, investors often turn to something called the hype cycle. Whenever a new technology originates, it goes through certain phases that lead to its maturity. The expectations from the technology at various phases are captured by the hype cycle. The American scientist and futurist Roy Amara states that we tend to overestimate the effect of a technology in the short run and underestimate the effect in the long run.
This is also known as the Amara's Law. The hype cycle divides the expectation in five distinct phases. Whenever a new technology clears the proof of concept, a lot of hype is created. This takes the technology to a peak of inflated expectation. Think for example about the idea of flying cars that originally was floated in the 1950s. Once that phase is over and the technology does not materialize, then the expectations take a nosedive. And this is mainly because of negative press. It's crucial at this point to stay committed with the technology. Perseverance leads to the creation of second generation products that are often created with the aid of more matured core and peripheral technologies. The product then sees gradual success called the slope of enlightenment on the hype cycle leading eventually to its fulfillment which is referred to as the plateau of productivity. So hype cycle helps us classify the various phases of technology with respect to the expectations. In economics, there's also the linear model of innovation that aims to understand technology and its diffusion. The linear model of innovation has two sub models, namely the technology push model and number two, the market pull model. Technology pushes when research in new technology drives the development of new products. Example of technology push is the creation of touchscreen. The concept was first materialized in the mid 1960s. Further development of it eventually led to the creation of touchscreen smartphones. It's interesting to note that there wasn't any need for these phones in the market. And yet when they arrived on the scene, they captured the market and became ubiquitous. The second model is the market pull. The term market pull refers to the need or requirement for a new product or solution to a problem which comes from the marketplace. The need is identified by a potential customer or market research. An example of market pull is the development of digital camera. Now before digital cameras, there was always a desire to take endless amount of photographs. The film camera technology made it very expensive to do so. The continuous pull from the market however ensured that the digital camera got developed to fulfill this gap. The market pull model helps us to evaluate the probability of success of a new technology or product. So hopefully in this segment we have covered indicators that will tell you where the technology stands and if it has a chance of prevailing or not. This brings us to our third segment, that is the metamorphosis of technology. We've seen that the world of technology is transient with an ever-changing landscape. How often it's observed that a new technology arrives on the horizon and within a short space of time completely eliminates the older one. In the last decade, smartphone technology emerged. Nokia, that was a market giant in the cell phone industry, is now a minority player because of its late adoption of smartphone technology. The emergence of new technology that replaces the old one is often at the back of a new material discovery or development. People remember Moore's Law. In 1975, Gordon Moore predicted that computational power will continue to double every two years. This law stood the test of time for more than three decades till eventually we maxed out the material space usage. It was the limitation of material properties that stopped the exponential growth of computing power. We can also observe how the arrival of composite materials have completely revolutionized the aircraft industry. This phenomena of a new material arriving on the scene and bringing with it a whole new set of technologies that rendered the other tech obsolete is captured very well by the model called Kondratiev wave. According to Kondratiev wave model, the discovery or invention of new material or development of new technology brings with it alternating intervals of high sectoral growth followed by intervals of slow sectoral growth. It is stated that the period of wave ranges from 40 to 60 years. Based on the theory, we are currently in the cycle of information technology that started from 1990. 
While this wave model is interesting and tells us from a historic perspective the chronological impact of technology, it no way should be treated as a hard limit for determining the lifetime of technology. And now we cover our next segment which is the law of unintended consequences. Technology has a strained relationship with social behavior. At times, technological developments lead to unintended consequences. As Al Gore famously quoted, old habits plus old technology have predictable consequences, while old habits that are hard to change plus new technology can have dramatically altered consequences. In other words, technology that may be brought in to fix one problem creates a new one. For example, high-speed train tracks that might be laid across a country with the thought that it would help to lower CO2 emissions by disincentivizing road and airplane journeys instead do otherwise. One would expect emissions per person going down. However, they go up because people can commute longer distances for work. This behavior is also termed as rebound effect, that is, the reduction in expected gains from new technologies that increase the efficiency of resource use because of behavioral or other systematic responses. A good example is that a 5% improvement in vehicle fuel efficiency does not result in 5% drop in fuel use. It only results in a 2% drop in fuel use. The missing 3% is consumed by driving faster or further than before. Having looked to some extent at the social response to technology, let's now look at the ultimate pitfall of technology, that is singularity. At present, it's just a theory, but will it remain that way? Let's explore in the next section. Technological singularity is the hypothesis that the invention of artificial superintelligence will abruptly trigger runaway technological growth, resulting in unfathomable changes to human civilization. While this may sound like implausible stuff of movies, and indeed many profitable movie franchises have emerged using the concept, however, leading intellectuals have expressed concerns over it. This includes the much revered theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking. We have already developed programs that allow machines to self-learn from our behavior. One example is the machine like Deep Blue that has beaten grandmasters at chess. The YouTube algorithm that suggests videos that you may like is another example. The next step would be to have algorithms that themselves generate more refined algorithms. Only when we create programs that will write other more evolved programs then we can have the possibility of autonomous machines that will produce other autonomous or semi-autonomous machines. Movies like Transcendence explored the possibility of uploading our consciousness into a machine. It is a fascinating concept indeed. While many are skeptical about mind uploading, but others are optimistic that it can be achieved as early as 2029. What is certain is that if it is done, it will bring a step change in our technological progress. Whether it is for good or bad has to be seen. But from the current evidence, a recent increased interaction with technology has not yielded fruitful results. It has in fact resulted in negative implications on our mental health. This begs the question if greater interaction with technology is really the way forward. And with this, the video is concluded. So what do you think about singularity? Please do mention it in the comment section. Do hit the like button if you learned something from the video. Share the video with your friends to get a discussion going. And please use the comment section, not only for your feedback, but for any questions regarding the evolution of technology. Once again, thank you for your attention.